Hi everyone, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a review and also a demonstration with the Leisure Arts Mini Maker Kit and this is the paint pouring kit. So I have wanted to try paint pouring for a while um, but it's a little intimidating for me because of the supplies you use. There are different ways to do it. There are different mediums to use to get the cells. There are you can add heat, you cannot add heat, you can just do a lot of different things with it. So when I seen this pop up um, in an email from Leisure Arts, I wanted to give it a try. For full disclosure, I do want to say this was sent to me for free. I emailed them and asked them and they sent it for me to do a review on it. Now that being said, I'm still going to be completely honest. There are things I like about this kit. There are things I don't like about this kit and I'll tell you about it. Now, first of all, this comes with quite a bit of stuff. It comes with two canvases. They are six by six. It also comes with a paintbrush, three different colors of paint. It also comes with a white paint, which we will get into, and then a book, which is really helpful. So let's go ahead and open this up. It comes nicely packaged. And the first thing that I'm going to pull out is how to thin your white paint. So they have in this little card, it tells you how to thin your white paint, what consistency you want it. Next up is the book. Now this is really nice to have. It tells you what you need to do, different pours or flipping cups or whatever, you know, you know what I mean, <laughs> different paint pour techniques. It also tells you, gives you a shopping list and it gives you the directions for how to do that. So that's really helpful. Then you've got your canvases. They are individually wrapped in plastic, which is nice. And these are six by six, like I said, they're a nice little canvas, kind of like you would buy at Michael's, a cheaper brand of canvas. They're not super nice, but they're not junky either. You also get two pairs of gloves, so four pairs of gloves in there. They're like the big cafeteria plastic gloves. I kind of wish they were more, a little tighter on the hand, I guess I would say, but then a lot of those gloves have latex in them. Some people are allergic to latex, so I get why they included these in there. Then you get onto your paint colors, and you have a pink, a blue, and a yellow. Now, these are great because they're your primary colors. You can go in and you can mix these up and create a ton of different shades with them. They each come individually um, closed off, so it's not going to spill or leak or anything. They have that nice little piece of kind of foam over it. So it's going to hold all of that paint inside. Then you've got a really large bottle of white, which is great for mixing up different colors and also for paint pouring too. Then you have your nice paintbrush and it is a nice one. I do have to say that. So let's go through the book. So in this book, it's going to go through quite a few different techniques, but it also is going to give you instructions on how to prepare your acrylic paints for pouring. Um, it tells you kind of how much you're going to need of your prepared paint for the size of the canvas you're using, which is a really nice kind of guide that's in there. It's got all your different techniques, like I said. And then on top of that, it's going to go over helpful hints, some troubleshooting, and then also how to finish your painting. So what kind of sealants you want, if you even want to use a sealant, things like that. So it's kind of going to break it all down for you in that book. So that's a really nice resource to have on hand. Now let's go ahead and get started on preparing our paints. I went ahead and looked at the book on how to prepare it with paints. I'm not going to add any pouring medium or anything. I'm going to use straight water with mine. Now, as I was pouring these into cups, first of all, let me say this does not come with cups. You need some kind of cup. I'm using little Dixie cups. You can use little plastic cups, whatever you have on hand, something to mix these up in. I'm also going to be adding water. This is just from a water bottle. Now, as I was pouring in those paints, I noticed that the white is very clumpy, the white paint in this kit. Maybe it's just mine, maybe mine set out. It was super cold the day it was delivered, so that could have something to do with why my paint's a little off. But it took some time and it took some, um, I guess you could say, arm work 
<laughs> to get this smooth. The first time I tried pouring it on the canvas, which you can see here, it was very clumpy still. So I mixed up a new one. Now, if that happens to you and you find that maybe your paint just didn't work out or something, go in with a palette knife and scrape it off. You can go back in and reuse this canvas. Don't think it's a wasted project. Just scrape off that wet paint and go right back in and you can go over the top of it. It's not that big of a deal. So my first white, like I said, was super clumpy. I did not go slowly enough adding water. What I should have done and what I did the second time was add my paint to my Dixie cup and then add drops of water and thinned it out that way. If you go in with a ton of water right at first, it's just going to end up like a cottage, very runny cottage cheese, if that makes sense. It sounds disgusting, looks gross, but that's what happened. So make sure if yours comes like this, you thin it out slowly. It's worth the extra work. So now I wanted to go ahead and use one of those techniques in the book. And I am using the dirty flip cup technique. I've seen it done so many times here on YouTube and I wanted to give it a shot. So I went in with my white cup and with all of my different colors, I'm just going to start pouring right in the center of that white paint. And it doesn't, I didn't worry about, um, going in color order or anything like that. I just grabbed cups and started dumping a little bit of paint in. Now I do want to mention that I mixed up my paints also with popsicle sticks. Those are not included in the kit. I have those just for my kids to do crafting and it was super easy. Now once I had all of them poured into the cup, I went ahead, put it on my canvas, kind of flipped my canvas over on top of the cup, held them together and then flipped it over onto my work surface. On the back of my work surface, I'm working on on parchment paper which is super nice to work on it's not going to get paint all over your desk it's cheap and it's easy to clean up you just ball it up and throw it away now once I flip that cup over I let it sit for a minute gave it a few taps then I lifted it up and let all that paint pour out onto the canvas now it's going to go out in one big blob you want to start to slowly turn your canvas I've seen people do it very quickly and then they kind of lose all the paint to one side. Um, go slowly. It's easier that way. It's easier to control everything. But what you're trying to do is get that paint to go over the edges. You don't want to lose all that paint. So again, go slowly, kind of let it just slowly drip over to the side. Now, whenever I first popped open my cup, it looked very white like stark white. But as that paint starts to thin out over the area, the surface area of the canvas, and it starts to kind of drip off the sides, that white is only the top layer of what's there. You're going to have colors start to kind of pop out literally you'll see as I'm doing this pop out from the background and they just kind of appear out of nowhere it is such a neat process to watch and I was fascinated by it now there are going to be some places where you still have that white which are great but with this I was so surprised with how white it looked when I took the cup off to how much color was actually on the canvas when everything was said and done that's kind of the beauty of this um, paint pouring, I find, is you never, unless you really know what you're doing, and I do not, you don't really know what you're going to get, and every time it's going to be completely unique, which is so fun to do. So I'm going to continue to just move this, tip it from side to side, tilt it slightly, and let that paint run over the edges. I want all of my edges covered and I'm going to get some places where my fingers touch that paint. That's okay. Um, it just is what it is. It's kind of kind of mess up the sides a little bit. If you can try just to touch the back, it's almost impossible though. But again, that's kind of why these bigger gloves are a little bit of a hassle. I wish the gloves were a little bit tighter, but that's okay. So once I am happy with the way this looks, I can just go ahead and sit this down on a flat, even surface to dry. If you put this on a tilted surface, that paint is going to continue to run. So flat, even surface and let it dry. And it's going to take a while. 
I let mine dry, dry overnight. I didn't add any sealant or anything to it before I took the pictures. It's too cold where I live right now to add. It would never dry, and I can't do it inside. So here's a look at what it looks like without the sealant. Look at some of those places where you get kind of like these bursts of rainbow colors. And then you have some really bright pinks, and the white has mixed with the pink, and it's just so gorgeous. I love, 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 love the way it turned out. But I was left over, or I had a lot of leftover little drips on my paper. So a fun thing if you're a paper crafter like me, and this is just kind of a fun little project you want to work on, or something you want to do with your grandkids or your kiddos, which would be really fun, take that leftover paint and pop some die cuts in it. It is so much fun to look at the kind of splotches you get on those die cuts. So a little extra something you can do with your leftover paint. Now... I wanted to try another one with the second canvas, and I am going to do this puddle pour technique. Now, I had my mishap with the white paint before, and so I went ahead and I grabbed one of my cheapo acrylic white paints to substitute in here to see if it worked any better. Don't do that. <laughs> Let me just tell you, unless you're working with kids and you're not trying to get something that maybe you want to hang up in your craft room or something along the way, do not sub in your cheap acrylic paints. It, it just doesn't work out. If you're doing it with kids, by all means, go for it. But if, well, maybe you'll like the look. I don't know. I'll just show you what it does. So full disclosure, I did sub out the white paint in this kit for my Craft Smart paint of white and I diluted it down with water. I took the rest of the colors, added some white paint to it, stirred those up, and then added water to dilute them down into a nice warm honey, like they said in the book, consistency. Now I'm just going to make puddles exactly like I did in the cup, but instead I'm going to do it directly on the canvas. This is a lot of fun too, just really different to have fun, play around with the colors and the order you're putting them in, and just to get all these colors on the canvas. So I used a pink, a purple, and a yellow, and then of course my white. And once I am done putting all these colors on, it's time to start tipping this canvas. Again, you wanna go slowly. You just wanna let it kinda do its thing and let it move super slowly, which is why I, I sped this up. It's kinda more the same of exactly what I did, letting those colors run together, mix together, and cover all the surface area of the canvas. But if you go super, super quick to one side, it's going to kind of distort those lines. It's also going to, you, you run the chance of all your paint running off that one side if you lose control of it. So nice and slow always wins the race, right? Again, you're going to get those drips to so make sure you have something underneath your work surface, whether it be a box or you're using parchment paper or something along those lines. Even old newspaper or old magazines or something like that will work as well. All right, as I am moving this around, I really, really, really love the way this one turned out. Now, I, again, wanted to just make sure that all that paint got to the edges and also over the sides of the edges for this. I wasn't sure because I used that cheap white paint if any cells were going to pop up. A few did. And again, this is going to look super one color or really like you poured puddles of paint whenever you first start this out. But keep going, keep tipping it, keep moving that paint around, and eventually it's going to spread out, let those colors pop up from underneath, and give you a really, really, really fun look. So if at first it looks like poop, keep going. <laughs> I mean, it's going to eventually look better. I say that about a lot of my projects. All right, once I had all of that paint moved around and I was happy with the coverage on the sides, again, I went ahead and just set this down on a very flat surface to dry. Nothing with any sort of tilt or even the slightest tilt. It's going to run because it's wet paint and there's quite a bit of that on there. Now, that's the thing about this. I don't think you really realize how much paint and layers is on this as you're tilting it out. But using that cheap paint, once it dries and it has so many layers on it, it starts to crack. So you'll see over on the left-hand side, I started to get some cracks, and I noticed that as it started to dry. It's not a huge deal, um, 
but it, it's noticeable. It's very, very noticeable. So use the white paint in the kit if you don't want that to happen. <laughs> and just go slowly adding your water to dilute it down. It takes some time. It takes some elbow grease, but it does get to the consistency you need it. There's a closer look of the comparative, just so you can see the cracks on the right-hand side compared to the nice surface over on the left. It is what it is. I still love the way it turned out, but just forewarning if you have an inkling to do what I did. Maybe if you tried to use thinner layers, you could get that cracking to not happen, but again, you don't really have a ton of control over this. It's kind of the beauty of it. So... One last thing, that extra paint dripping, go ahead and take some water paper, watercolor paper and smush right into there. It's a lot of fun to play around with and just to clean up the mess and not have as much waste. So moving on, would I recommend this kit? Yes. Now, if you are serious about getting into paint pouring and you want to maybe sell your pieces, this isn't for you. If you want to try it like me and you just want to have fun with it and play around and find out what this technique is, I would absolutely recommend that to see if you like it or if it's even fun for you. Some people aren't about the mess and you don't find that until you start doing this. But the book alone, I love with this kit. I think the paint is good. The white paint is iffy. The colors are really good. Um, but again, you can work with it as long as you thin it down slowly, like I've said many times. The canvases are good. The gloves work. The paintbrush is awesome. But the favorite is the book that it comes with. That's my favorite. And if you just want to give this a shot, the paint pouring, this kit is only $20 compared to buying one paint, even like a heavy body acrylic from Michaels, ranges from about eight to ten dollars so you're getting a pretty good value here to give this technique a shot so that is going to do it for me today i hope you guys enjoyed this video i had a lot of fun playing around with this kit and making this video and a few pieces of artwork if you enjoy my content be sure to subscribe to my channel links for this video are going to be down in the description box below happy crafting everyone